Hello, uh, my name is Thomas Dady. I am one of the summer 2014 interns. Uh, and my presentation today is called DALA, Are We Compressed Yet? Um, so the first question that comes to mind is what is DALA? Um, it is a new royalty-free video codec um, for the internet. Um, what does for the internet mean? Um, one way to take that is it needs to be able to uh, encode cat videos as easily as possible um, and, and as most efficiently. Um, another way to take that is it needs to be able to handle all sorts of use cases, down from uh, like a 3G smartphone video conferencing up to uh, ultra HD content. Um, it is developed by uh, Ziff, uh, also sponsored by Mozilla. Um, Ziff is the same people who developed Opus, which is a successful uh, audio codec for uh, WebRTC. Um, so the question is, why are we developing DALA? Um, there's several reasons. Um, Opus, uh, the, the audio codec that Ziff developed is super uh, successful, not only because it's royalty free, but it's also because it's just the best in compression overall. Um, it, it really helps to sell your codec when not only do you have to not uh, have patent licenses for it, but it is also, uh, it covers many, many different use cases and is, performs the best out of all available codecs. Um, and currently, uh, it is, the same is not true for video. We currently don't have a video codec that is, uh, performs uh, better than uh, and cover formats. But we think we can do better, which is why we're working on this video codec. Um, this codec uses many different uh, novel uh, techniques because we don't want to just make a small inc incremental improvement over other codecs. We want to make a big jump. We want to be the next, next video. Um, the most central probably is the lap transforms. Uh, the transform is basically how we t take a representation of video into a different form that's more easy to compress, more easy to take out the details that you don't matter and keep the ones that do. Um, lap transforms basically uh, uh, perform a lot better than the other ways to do it, and, um, but make things much more difficult for us because uh, they change basically the whole structure of the codec. Um, we, we don't use many of the other features that codecs, other codecs use. It makes it easy for us to avoid all the um, IP issues around other codecs, but also it means that we have to come up with a lot of new techniques. There's a lot of uncharted territory. Um, we have many other different techniques that we use. Uh, some of them are borrowed or heavily modified from Opus. Um, and uh, one, one thing we have to do with all these things is figure out what, what do we need to use, what do we need to improve. Um, one, one thing you can do on some of these things, you can actually just go out and say, run it through a bunch of images. There's, there's, there's many ways to say that one performs superior to other just like clearly for technical reasons. This shows like, this is an example of the, the transform gain. And we can actually just show on like natural images that one particular transform is a better representation than others. But this isn't always true. So we need some better way to say our codec is good. And these are the features that we want to include. So uh, the solution to this is, one solution is actually just to encode images, you know, encode dif different features at the same rate, aka the same file size, and look at the pictures and see which one looks better. So we can do this uh, when this, this is actually one of the most important ways to compare codec, but it's also very uh, time intensive. It doesn't let you try a lot of options quickly, um, and it doesn't, and it also requires a lot of time, especially if you want to test many, many different videos, because you're one, something that performs well in one video might perform really poorly on the whole rest of the videos in the world. Um, so there are solutions to this. Uh, these are called metrics. Um, the whole idea here is to be able to assign a particular number to how good a video is. Um, they all have some fancy, scary looking names. Um, they, they, they don't really stand for anything terribly useful, but what they do is they assign a number. They say, this is how good your video is. And they're a good first baseline for uh, determining of your video quality and, and, and looking at features and seeing what does better, what does worse. And we want to run this on many, many different videos. We have a large collection of videos, um, and we want to be able to make sure that our improvements cover like all sorts of different videos that people would ever want to encode with our codec. We have both natural pictures. We have, you know, there, there's all sorts of different special cases. We have uh, computer CG. We have uh, like screen sharing. All sorts of these things matter. 
Uh, this also means that it takes a very long time to encode the, all these videos. We use relatively short video samples, but still we need a lot of processing power to be able to encode these every time you want to run a test. We want to be able to run these tests as uh, much as possible, uh, as quickly as possible. Um, so my solution is kind of along the normal, traditional Mozilla-style naming scheme is, are we compressed yet? This is what it looks like. Um, it's a, basically a website. It's uh, not quite as intuitive as uh, some of them with just a graph over time. What it is instead is it's a sort of continuous integration system um, where you submit any change, you upload it to a uh, web form. This is what the, the submission form looks like. It's very basic. You just put a, a commit hash in and it'll start. And it basically gives you this graph. What this graph shows is uh, different bit rates in bits per pixel. Uh, so lower quality is on the left, higher is on the right, and how, how good your picture looks. So you can, in this example, we have two different uh, versions selected, and we can see that one like clearly does better than the other because its line is higher in the graph. There's also something called uh, BD rate, which is a script that gives a, a numerical comparison of like the difference in area uh, between the two curves. So it's a more numerical rather than visual way to see it. So how do we generate all this? Well, there's a huge mess of scripts on the back end, which is what I worked on, um, as well as that front end page. So uh, after you submit a job, it goes through, uh, there's, there's Nginx, so that does the HTTPS secure support. Um, it forwards to a node server. Uh, this is basically what keeps track of all the Amazon instances. Um, it has an, there's an IRC bot that tells you when to start when, when, and when something finishes. If there's some error, it'll tell you in the channel. Um, and that, that forwards the jobs onto another small Python script, which then uh, coordinates all the jobs between Amazon EC2 instances. So we use the, ver the largest available uh, Amazon EC2 instance for computing, which has 32 virtual threads. And we can, we can use any number of those, depending on how many videos we want to run and how fast we want it to get done. Um, those instances each run a video encoder. Um, and then they actually run, the, the video decoder also produces a decoded frame. And then we also run every metric on that. We compare the original video and the encoded video. Um, each instance also has its own local copy of the video file so that we don't have to send all these videos, uh, the up raw uncompressed original videos over the network every single time we want to run. Um, so so uh, now that we have this, this tool can also run any other video codec. It doesn't have to run DALA. So we can actually see how we do compared to other video codecs. So um, the obvious question is, uh, well, you know, where are we right now today? Um, so this is, a, this is actually from a month ago. This is uh, with a, a very small set of videos down uh, between uh, video, video conferencing on a phone size up to uh, 720p, so mid-quality mid size, where we actually we do better than all the other video codecs up to about 0.5 bits per pixel, and we do worse. Um, this is uh, actually very promising because we haven't nearly finished a video codec, and we're still experimenting on very many things, and to have this already at this point is great. And we actually do even better. Uh, if we take this graph, we just pull out uh, X265, which is our, our, our nearest competitor at this point, uh, and look at 1080p videos only, uh, we actually cross over at a much lower point, at about 0.2 bits per pixel, which isn't, isn't as clear as this logarithmic graph, but it's actually about 0.2. Um, and so we actually uh, do quite well, and these graphs are very informative for us to be able to see you know, where, where, where we are uh, relative to everyone else and where we need to improve. So there's a lot of future improvements we can make to this too. Um, uh, the, the support for other codecs is very basic. We'd like to be able to compare us for many different use cases, um, which is probably what I'll be working on next, is uh, we want to be able to compare, um, like real time has some particular constraints that affect, don't actually affect us as much as other video codecs, so they're very important for us to compare um, and show what, how we perform in those use cases. I'd also like to improve the, like, the user interface and it'd be really nice for this to become something that people can just look at as a user resource to see how we're doing. Um, I, I can answer now questions uh, about the different uh, video codec. 
or about our, our scripts, um, you can also contact us if you're interested on Zip.org or uh, on IRC. Yeah. Right, sorry, uh, you want to go first? Yes, it is. Um, it's currently not measured uh, as part of our metrics. Um, it is something that's very important and is, is you know, a huge difference between, um, it, you know, many of these codecs like X265 actually is much slower than our encoder right now. <laughs> and uh, this is why I was interested in the real time constraints where you can only, you only have so many CPU cycles to create a video. And it, it would be very, the comparisons at some point need to be equalized for, you know, as for CPU time. That's a very important practical consideration. And we're actually doing pretty good in that regard right now. What's the encoder? Yes, there's an encoder and a decoder. Um, this, this some, I think some places on the internet is still a little bit inaccurate about this, but we do actually have a complete working encoder decoder library and a player. Um, there's actually partial work already integrated into Firefox okay. as well as VLC. Yep, it can be it can be imported into FFmpeg just like uh, like uh, uh, lib uh, lib opus and lib theora are. Yep. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, how many different videos? So the 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 very the shortest video uh, encode that we have. Um, basically, we try at about uh, 28 different rates for the, the and we use uh, eight different videos. So that's about uh, 200 encodes. Did I do my math right? Um, it's actually a lot much larger number of encodes for. The, I have some uh, larger test sets planned. Um, the the very short test sets are very useful because you can get a result in seven minutes, which is great. Um, but we also want very, very comprehensive sets. They run on many more machines for some of these things. And do you have uh, data <laughs> on how the sort of total compute resource usage is compared to X264 or some of the other um, Yeah, that, that uh, oh yeah, I can. So the question was, uh, so we have data on how fast our, our compressor is, basically, compared to other codecs, how much time it takes to encode a video. Um, I currently do not uh, store that as part of my thing. Um, I can tell you that it's actually very comparable. I'm not too concerned about it right now, but it is something I'd definitely like to add, especially for the real-time case, but also just as a, from a practicality standpoint. If, if it takes, you know, a month to encode a frame, you're, you're, you're not going to impress anyone. Yeah, the, the problem's worse than that. It's actually how many or how much power you use. Current encoding processes can yes. stack up in the same machine before it starts to melt. Yep. Um, our, our encoders are currently single threaded, so I, I actually do one, one per virtual thread in mine. Um, that could change, though. And it, it also depends on memory bandwidth and all sorts of other things. This is an unfair question, but um, do you have a strategy for getting the hardware people to buy into this? So H two six four is in hardware and yes. devices, and that's a killer problem. It is. Uh, so I'm actually kind of a hardware person. This is one of the other things I worked on. I actually Can you repeat the question? Yes. Yes. Um, the question is, do we have hardware vendors and people looking for support of this codec? So. The, the first answer is that I'm actually a kind of a hardware person. I'm an electrical engineer, and I actually worked on a small implementation of a piece of DALA in hardware. Um, uh, one thing that we actually, that the other codecs don't have, like uh, HEVC, is not widely deployed in hardware. Um, and it, it, it's slowly starting to get there, um, but it's a very large, very large hardware encoder piece for someone to just drop in their chip. Um, so there, we actually, uh, I think we can do, actually do very well just in pure software implementation. <clears throat> of course, using all sorts of optimizations like uh, SIMD and maybe partial hardware acceleration. Um, 
So, uh, you know, hardware would be nice for in, in, in very, you know, constrained use cases. But we'd also like our, our codec to perform well in hardware, but also perform well in software implementations because we know we're going to have to run in software, at least, you know, for a while. Like, like, just like HEVC has to do right now. The problem you wind up being against is that a great software implementation still has a tough time competing with a mediocre hardware implementation. So, it's yes. a tough bar. It is, for sure. Um, but it, but, it, but it, is, it is a bar that's there and something we have to do. So, I'm. I'm, I'm hopeful that we, we, have, we, have, we have technology that can actually uh, get us there. All right.